Hello Western. In the previous video, we discussed what happens when you have light that passes through two slits. And the next thing I want us to consider is what happens when you have more than just two slits. And it turns out that you get kind of the same sort of thing that we had before. You have these sort of interesting interference pattern. I should point out that when you just have two slits, you have an interference pattern that looks kind of something like this. So the thing about having more than one slit is that the interference pattern becomes much, much sharper. Here we have these real broad peaks when you just have two slits. When you add more and more slits, it becomes narrower and narrower. Now, we can think about what the condition is for constructive interference. So looking at this figure over here on the right, we can see the idea is that constructive interference occurs when the light that passes through this top slit interferes constructively with the light that passes through the slit just below it. And then that slit interferes constructively with the slit below it, and so on. So notice now that any slit will interfere constructively with the light passing through any other slit. And this occurs at the same place that it occurred before when sine theta is equal to m lambda over d. Now d is equal to the distance between two adjacent slits. Now we can also get an interference pattern when light passes through just a single slit. Now the reason that this occurs is because what can happen is that the light that passes through, say for example, the top half of the slit can travel a different distance to the screen than the light that passes through the bottom half of the slit. So as a result of this, we can still have an interference pattern that occurs. Now, it turns out in general, it's kind of a little challenging to find the positions of the maxima that form from a single slit interference. However, it's relatively simple to write down a formula for the destructive interference. The idea behind this is that the light that passes through the very top part of this slit needs to interfere destructively with the light that passes through the middle of the slit. The reason that this is the condition is if I consider a point that's just below the, the top part of the slit, then it'll interfere destructively with the point that's just below the center of the slit. And we can do this point-wise for the entire top slit. So for every point on the top of this slit, there is a point in the bottom half of the slit that will interfere destructively with this. Now looking at this little triangle that I have drawn here, again where this is angle theta, we can see that our condition for destructive interference is that sine of theta is equal to half of a lambda divided by, and this distance right here is half the width. So it occurs when sine of theta is equal to lambda divided by the width of the slit. And keep in mind now, this is the location of the destructive interference. So let's go ahead and just look at a, another example. So the example says we have a diffraction grating that has 2400 slits per centimeter. The third order maximum occurs at theta equals 18 degrees, and we're asked to find the wavelength of the light. So this is a pretty straightforward uh, example. Remember that the condition for a destructive, or for, I'm sorry, for constructive interference is that d sine of theta sub m is equal to m lambda divided by d. I forgot to write down my knowns, but they're here. So the theta is equal to 18, and this is theta sub 3, because this is the third order maximum. So that means that m is also equal to 3. Now, in order to use this formula I have here on this next page, I need to come up with the spacing between the slits. So the way we do this is that I was told that there were 24 slits per centimeter. So this means that the spacing between the slits is equal to 1 centimeter divided by 2400, which is equal to 4.17 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. Plugging this into this formula, and now solving for lambda, so lambda is equal to 
d sine theta divided by m. I'm plugging my values that I have into this. So d is equal to this 4.17 times 10 to the minus 6. m is equal to 3. And theta is equal to 18 degrees. We see that this is equal to 429 nanometers. And so that's the last example for the slit interference. And so uh, if you're doing this as the homework assignment over the weekend, then uh, I guess uh, you're done now. So enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll see you on Monday.